every seat. It's important to know that kila kiti. Amen. Let, let's go back to where we were. We are addressing and we must climax today. What remains, we will address it next year. Because we need to go to something else. The three things that the enemy hates. And we are addressing, we address the issue of covenant. We address the issue of harmony, which is family. We are addressing the issue of ordinance. Now, I, I, I want to share with you something that I think is very important. The enemy will never oppose what he knows works against him. If the enemy knew it doesn't have an effect on him, he would not oppose it. So opposition should be an indication that you're on the right course. Period. If the enemy knows that it has no power, he would encourage you to do it. Opposition should be an indication that you touch the right pattern. Are you with me? Yes. Why does the enemy oppose our practices of faith, which we call our ordinances? It's because he knows that that is what disarms him. Are you with me? Now, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That is a powerful statement. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God. That means they are ordained of God. That's why they are called ordinances. It is what God has tested and proven to work. Now listen, God doesn't give us weapons to try with. He gives us what he has tried. With evidence results. God will never give you an armor to try. He gives you what he has tried. And the devil knows the power of the armor of God. And then you know what the Bible says? Stand your ground. Why? Because when you stand with the armor, the enemy will take a turn away from you. The armor of God is our victory. Three very important things. We are talking about the ordinances. We talk about the power of baptism as an ordinance. And the devil knows it. Baptism is an armor. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Baptism is an armor. It's not about being immersed in water. It's about a transition. So when we are practicing baptism, we must do it consciously. Number two, we say the next armor is praise and worship. It's an ordinance. Listen, anytime you have an opportunity to praise God, yes. put on the armor of praise. Amen. The devil knows the power of praise and worship. Amen. I say every time you have an opportunity, that's why, listen, never scheme to miss worship in church. Shetan na mejo wengi wetu atuwezi kuwa, atuwezi toa mimba, atuwezi fanya yu vituko yote, lakini anajua tunasa miss praise and worship. So you are not a sinner, but you are not a threat. Praise and worship disarms the devil. When you have an opportunity to dance, do it. You are disarming your enemy. You know what praise and worship means? You are telling the devil, I'm not taking my sweat to the battlefield. I am taking it to the altar. So I will make my sweat become a worship to God so that God can fight my battles. From my Bible, the Bible tells me God will never let you sweat twice. You can't sweat in his house and sweat in the field. If you sweat here, he will sweat for you there. Every time you praise God, you are disarming your enemy. When you have an opportunity to dance, dance, you are disarming your enemy. Dignity is weakness. Ungwana ni udhaifu. Ebu wangali ya jiraniyao kama hakuna chasho hapa muambia utaenda kutoa huko inje wewe. Tabia. I want, listen. David gives us a principle of that warfare. David understood the power of praise and worship. 
He's the only king who never lost a battle. But he fought his battles by dancing. I'm talking to you. Stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Stop explaining your enemy. Put on your dancing shoes. And praise the God who is able to fight your battles. He says the battles are not yours. Give me the praise. I will give you the victory. Hey. Give me the praise. I will give you. You are not even answering me. I say give me the praise. I will give you. That's right. Ata watu wasi omjua mungu anajua. Ukiambia moi tawala Kenya tawala. Wangapi mulikuwa shule wakati moi alikuwa napita barabara barabara. Mukikuja barabara na kufunga barabara. Na kusema tawala Kenya hata mujiku kutawala Kenya ni kitu gani. Siku hiyo mutakula mkate na soda. Give him praise na masiwa. The power of God is activated by praise. Let me tell you something. The devil was the leader of praise and worship. He doesn't want replacement. Can I tell you a secret? The devil was at the same position where God dwelled. Courtesy of an office called praise and worship. Praise and worship elevates you to a dimension of God's operation. There is power in your mouth. The only problem is you open it when you are annoyed. The Bible says sing praises. Help me tell your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah. Praise, Praise is the menu of God. Yes. Kwa hivyo Mungu anakulanga nini? Praise and worship. The Bible says he's seeking for true worshipers. Not, not, not religious ones, not dutiful ones, not the ones that are false. When you praise God, you disarm your enemy. And you empower your God. And remember, the power of God is activated by the ordinance of praise. Would you say amen or hallelujah or yes? There is power in praise. Number three, we say the ordinance of Passover, which brings the issue of the Holy Communion. Holy Communion, ladies and gentlemen, is powerful. Because while you are receiving new life, you are squeezing the neck of your enemy. Holy Communion preserves, but at the same time, revenges on your behalf. Listen, every time you take the bread and the blood, you are not only declaring preservation, you are declaring judgment. Amen. Anything that is against your success, anything that is against your freedom, anything that is against your family, every time ukikula mesa ya bwana, unatangaza ulinsi kwako, lakini unatangaza punishment kwa duhi. May the devil be punished every time you partake of the communion. Amen. Listen, during the communion, you activate the angel of protection, but you also activate the sword of revenge. Amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Are you in the house? Yes. Now, there is another ordinance which I want to address today briefly. No, no, we address the other the other ordinance, the power of the anointing oil. The power of the anointing. And we say it a lot about that. Yes. Listen, the devil knows that the anointing empowers, gives you authority. Amen. You know what? Yes. Kings were consecrated through the anointing. Yes. Priests were. Listen, what does the anointing does? It gives you the right of dominion. Amen. You are anointed. Put your hand on your forehead. Say, in the name of Jesus, the, of Jesus. the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yes. He has, he has anointed me. You know, you know, so the anointing oil becomes an affirmation of the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me show you two for today. An ordinance in Hebrews chapter 10, 24. Now, before I go there, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Ordinances makes you spiritual. Ordinances makes you spiritual. What does that mean? You are practicing God's culture in an earthly environment that turns an earthly environment into a godly, heavenly environment and therefore guarantees heavenly results in a local, earthly location. Your story, you say, Salaya Bwana, you say, 
ufalme wako uje mapenzi yako yatendeke hapa kama ya ilivyo mbinguni utaletaje ufalme wa Mungu hapa duniani kama mbinguni kwa kufanya vitu na tabia na mwenendo na kanuni kama vile Mungu anafanya mbinguni kwa mfano mbinguni kuna worship ndio maana hakuna vita mbinguni kuna worship ndio maana Mungu anatawala ukitaka utawala hapa yale yanafanyika huko fanya hapa Mbinguni kuna maombi Jesus is in the city. Do you want it to come here? Do that which is practice in heaven. How do you enter into the spirit world? By practicing divine ordinances. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24. We must handle at least five today to finish this thing. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 verses what? 24. Let's read together and let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and do good deeds uh -huh. not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction at it is of some but encouraging one another and all you shall see the day of Christ look at me the power of church fellowship Listen, church is not a Sunday event. It's a divine ordinance. There is power in fellowship. Let me show you five things you fulfill every time you go to church. Number one, every time you go to church, you declare the lordship of Jesus over your life. Listen, by salvation, he is lord. By fellowship, you declare, affirm his lordship. It is a sacred moment where your mind and your thoughts and your worship and your energy are focused on his lordship. Now remember what we said? God does not force himself on people. As much as you can watch a service online, as much as you can read the Bible online, as much as you can have a fellowship at home, there is power in fellowship. Yes. Number two, every time you go to church, you fulfill the scripture of two. Amen. Two are better than one. Now, siseme mimi na abudu na nyumba yangu. Nyumba yako sio wawili, nyumba yako ni moja. Why do you want to separate your family when you don't want to go to church? And say where two or three are gathered, the Lord is there. You, you are now three because it is Sunday. But when it's not Sunday, you are one. Yes. Listen, there is power. You fulfill the scripture of two are better than one. One chases a thousand, two puts ten thousand to flight. If you stay away from fellowship, you will be chasing a thousand demons. It will take you time to chase ten thousand. But when we come together, we send away 10,000 at once. The Bible talks about in Psalms, when you come together, there is what the Bible says, there is an anointing that is released in harmony. The Bible says it's like the dew of Haman. It's like the anointing from the head of Haron. The Bible says there, the Lord commands a blessing. There is what we call commanded blessings. It happens in fellowship. Number four. Everybody is a strength while everybody has a weakness. When we come together, we, 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 we tap other people's strength to complement in our area of weakness. Everybody is a grace. Everybody is a strength. Na hivi tu ya mungu neema. Sikia, kila mtu anapepa neema fulani. Kila mtu anapepa ngu fulani. Kila mtu anakibali fulani. Ukikuja kanisa kuna udhaifu uko nayo ambaye ndugu yako ana nguvu. Na hivi vitu ya Mungu uambukisanwa. Amen. Ukikuja kanisa na una udhaifu wa maombi, ukikaa na ndugu mwenye anaomba anakuambukiza. Ya kuambukiza jirani yako ambia na usiambukiza utaifu mwambie. <laughs> mwambie receive my grace. Uh, uh, you don't just tell them, release your grace. Tell them, receive my grace. Receive my grace. That's right. 
if you are struggling in business when you go to fellowship on Sunday when you come to lunch hour you sit beside the brother who is a grace in that area guess what by the time you live here are you with me when you come to church and you feel weak have you discovered by the time you leave church you are strong you forgot your problems why because grace is infectious that's why the Bible is conscious to say walk with the wise and avoid fools because even foolishness is infectious Everybody is a strength. If you belong to this church where the pastor shakes your hands, you don't know what that means. Some people, there's another seat out there, Jose. Kuna kitimoja pale tafadali, somebody can shift out there. Kuna wale kanisa ambaye, pastor anasemama chumapili anasalamia watu. Na kuna watu stupid enough wana avoid pastor. That's how stupid, ati neema, sikia, mkono ya pastor siyo mkono ya ugali. Hiyo ni mkono wa mungu. Sikia, pasta wako akipanda hapa, akiwa kwa ofisi, siyo mutu. Yes. You understand? Yes. That's why napokea sadaka yenu kwa niyaba ya mungu. That's why na wabariki. That's why na wanenea. Pasta anasimama kwa mulango, kuna mutu wana avoid pasta. Ndiyo henda salamie manamba. <laughs> Nasio kwa sabo mama namba ni mbaya. Ndiyo henda salamie kakitu kengine. Listen, church is a place of infection. Amen. Say Amen. amen. When I go to church weak, I come back strong. Yes. When I go poor, I meet a brother. Yes. That's why, listen, when you go to church, don't be this dignified believer who does not understand that church is about fellowship. Yes. It's not about attendance. Yes. Never sneak away from church. Uh-huh. Shake two, three people's hands. Yes. If there is somebody you've been, you've been admiring, they won't suspect you in church. You go to them and say, baby, hey, my brother, I've been watching you. I've seen the way you behave with your wife. I've seen the machine you drive. I know what you do. Can I have a hug from you? Napungusa uchinga. Ile tabia kusema eh nani ataenda kusalamia watu atafikiri sikia ni kwa baba yako na hao ni ndugu zako na mkiwa home mko na haki ya kukumbatia mtu. Hapana shika mtu ako na shida kama eh wewe tutisi tuchiendee. Hapana. Hebu nisaidie sema kanisa ni mahali pa neema. Kanisa ni mahali pa Yes. Pananza ushirika ya singles. Mingle. Mingle. Mingle with each other. Hata ujui jirani yako anafanya nini? Mwambie akusalamie. Mwambie akubeh hak. Mwambie akubariki kidogo. Mwambie unipende kidogo. Ukiona jirani yako akusalamia akupendi, ako na shida kuliko ya kwako. Come on. Napenda wale watu wanapigana na security. Lazima nisalamie dadi kwetu mimi naitwa dadi. You know, lazima lazima nisalamie dadi. Security wakasirika lakini bora nimesalamiana. Because I know what I want. Mtu wewe sasa nilikataza kusalamia sasa sikuje kwa kanisa. Nani akuje kanisa? Ni wewe. That's why sikia ukiona that's why I like some people who understand issues. You remember I told you ukienda kwa hoteli na ukute kuna tajiri pale anakula na wewe unakula pale na wenzako. Usiseme Mungu namwombea mkuse anilipie. Ita waita mwambie unipe receipt huyo mtu. Siku yangu ya kuachana na umaskini wangu umeisha. Kama ulikuwa umefanya order sema cancel. Leta kunywa maji moto. Hii umaskini yangu itaenda kwa tajiri. Na tajiri akikula umaskini wako. Shetani ashindwe fululisa. That's right. That's why ukiwa na pesa tumia baba yako, tumia mama yako. Nunua miaka yake. Nunua shida sake, nunua ushindi wake. Hepa challenges alipita. When you honor your father and your mother, you escape the challenges they went through. Did you hear what I say? When you honor your parents, you escape their challenges. And by the way, I'm sorry, I'm mixing myself. Honor is an ordinance. A position you honor, you occupy. That's why the Bible says, honor the Lord your God with your first fruit. You know what he's saying? Link your limitation to God. But listen, there is power in church. Hebu niulizie jirani yako, mara ya mwisho ulienda kanisa ni lini? Na sijaribu kudanganya mbele ya Mungu. Na ulienda saa ngapi? Ulipata maombi? Ulikuwa kwa praise and worship? Ulipata matangazo? 
Ulitoa sadaka? Ulitoka saa ngapi? Ulisalamia pasta. Kuna watu kanisa mkisema neema ya Bwana wetu ameanza neema ya Bwana yetu Yesu Kristo na ushirika wa vichui kitu gani huko nje. Help me tell your neighbor neighbor. Neighbor. On behalf of the preacher. On behalf of the preacher. Go to church. Go to church. Listen. Since you gave your life to Christ, you are a wife to Christ. Every time you don't go to his house on Sunday when he's longing for love, you are actually practicing adultery. You are becoming a harlot on the day your husband has come home. Shame on the devil. Your husband has been away. Sunday is the day he's coming to meet his darling. He's come with goodies. He's come with blessings. He's come with passion. He said, I came for worship. I want my darling to worship me. I have brought some blessing. I want to heal you. I have missed you. And the stupid wife has gone to the village to take a curse to their parents away from their lover. Amenda maraundi kuosha gari. Maraundi nini? Mwende, mwanda, mwenda. Listen, you are the wife of Christ. He meets you in his house on the day of fellowship. No husband would be happy to have missed the wife and long to come expecting some darling sweet flower, love, passion, nice shower, a nice meal. And then anafika nyumbani atumeenda kufanya kesi ya shamba. Shetani ya shindwe fululiso. Tell your neighbor you are married to Christ. Yes. And on Sunday you take your love. I love you Lord. I miss you Lord. Come on. Fellowship is an ordinance. Love church. And let me tell you something. You can't love God beyond how much you love his house. Stop telling me God comes to your house. Look at the issues in your house. How long do you pray in that house? Do you even pray for food in that house? Do you think God, it's a silent listener in, the, in every meal? Which meal? <laughs> and you even am embarrassed to say it's a silent listener while you are eating. Yes. Look at the quarrels in that home. And there was silence in the house of God. Listen. Anytime you give God's worship a second priority, you are actually becoming a spiritual harlot. You are not your own. You are the wife of Christ. Amen. I just talk to you. Amen. Husbands tell their wives to quit their jobs. Talk to me. Yes. Can you imagine I've gone home. I've just gone home in the evening. Or I've just come from a trip. And uh, I've gone home. And I get to the gate. And I call my, my, my wife and say, hey baby. I'm at the gate. I've just come. Nimelete nyama kuota. Nimelete mutura kidogo. You know? Samosa. Alafo na niambia, I'm sorry baby. Uh, one of my girlfriend is having a birthday in Gitale, a bash. And I have gone to Gitale and I don't think what I will come back. Do you think I will get to the gate? You think I'm a pastor? <laughs> Look at the wrong revelations you are getting. <laughs> May the Lord transform your mind. Yes. Now, you see the way you are feeling? Yes. That is exactly how God feels. Yes. When he comes on Sunday, expecting his beloved to bring worship, yes. we bring the sacrifice of praise as we come to the house of God. Yes. I bring the sacrifice of praise and to the house of the Lord. I bring the sacrifice of praise and to the house of the Lord. And we offer unto you the sacrifices of death giving. And we offer unto you the sacrifices. Let's say it together. We bring. We bring the sacrifice of prayer. 
into the heart of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the heart of the Lord. And we hover. And we hover. Come on, choir. Come on, bass. The sacrifice. Yes. You, you know why God expects you on Sunday? Church is a place where we take our testimonies. Lord, you are good on Monday. Lord, you blessed me on Tuesday. Lord, you saved me from a trap on Wednesday. Lord, you gave me favor on Thursday. Lord, I would have died on Friday. Lord, you blessed me on Saturday. I come to bring testimony. And because church will not give you enough time to do it, I put it into worship. I'm dreading my sorrows. I'm treading my shame and I'm laying them down for the joy of me. I don't care whether the praise team are under stress. I have my tambourine in the name of my testimony. I have my guitar in the name of my praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. I say yes, Lord. Listen. Listen. Stop, stop, stop. So, when you go to church, you disarm the devil, you qualify the principle of two are better than one, you merge what the Bible says, one chases a thousand, and two puts 10,000 to flight. And then guess what? When you are alone in your daily life, you are a soldier. When you go to church for worship, you become an army. Amen. You heard what I said. You are not competent as a soldier. There is noise. R remove it. Remove it. It is it, it's, it's very bad on, on, online. Remove that noise. When you listen to it online, it's very bad, Moses. Remove it. Remove it. Remove it. Remove it. Thank you. It's very bad when you hear it online. It's very bad. So listen, w when you are alone, you heard there was a story yesterday. I didn't say kill my voice now. Give me my voice. W you heard last night. There is a police officer who tried to go to some bar somewhere to arrest criminals, and he was alone. And he was stamped to death. He was a soldier. You can't do that to an army. When you go to church, you join the army of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Matthew 18, 20. Oh, oh, I needed to finish the other ones. Matthew 18, 20. Remember, honor is an ordinance. 18, 20 says what? For where two or three are gathered in my name. Meeting together as my followers. I am there among them. Is your house a qualification of this? Who is the pastor in that house? Who leads praise and worship? Who collects the offerings? Can I tell you something? Never make God beg you what he gave you. And the last one, let me mention this briefly. You, you write this down. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1. Mose, Mose, Mose. Chapter 2, verses 1 of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 31. The Bible says when they were praying together, the place where they were was shaken. The place where they were were shaken. When you read the other part, it talks about how the church became powerful. How the church became powerful. Can we give a hand to Mose? Can we give a hand to Mose? Moses, we have encouraged you now. Yes. The other ordinance is Malachi. Chapter 3, verses 11. Giving your tithe and your offering is an ordinance. Now, let me show you this, and I want you to hear this. I go back to my first statement. The devil fights what he knows. The devil fights what he knows. Works against him. If tithe and offering had no power, the spirit of darkness would not be skimming. It's so bad that even those who don't go to church have a problem with it. It's so bad, such that if you give, an, if you give money in a fundraising, nobody complains. If you give it in the church, somebody complains. We are accused of taking money from widows. Let me ask you, brother. 
if you are in the days of Elijah, does not only collect an offering from a widow, he collects the last meal. The widow is here, the last meal is here, and their baby is here. Guess who was the cause of the famine? The prophet. He has stopped rain, caused famine, and the little remaining, he comes for it. In the name of, in the, name of the Lord. How many of you, will, can you imagine nation, headline or standard in the days of Elijah? Breaking news. The prophet behind the famine. That's why the things of God are never comprehended here. They are received here. Now listen to the power of the tithe. The Bible says in Malachi, it's an ordinance of protection on our resources. Let me read it for you. Bring all the tithe to my house, which is a tent, into the storehouse, so that there might be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so much great blessings until there is no room to receive it. Now listen, tithing changes the source of our provision. It's no longer from the earth. It goes to heaven. Now, you can't comprehend that upstairs. You can't. How God can turn it from here to there. Let me show you what it means. How do you explain that a man is told to sow seed in a dry season? And he harvested more than when the rains were. Look at verses 11. Then I will rebuke the devourer, which are insects, plagues, for your sake, he will not destroy the fruit of the ground, nor will your vine in the field drop in grapes before harvest. For, says the Lord of hosts, three things that are very important. Look at me. The authority to con, 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 con. The authority to confront the spirit of poverty is not with you. It is with God. I think you needed to hear that. Amen. You don't say the spirit of poverty, I cast your way. Yeah. It is not in your pocket. Yeah. It says the rebuking of the devourer is my responsibility. Yeah. Among the demons God told us to cast, the one that relates to poverty, yeah. he says leave that one with me. Yeah. You heard what I said? Yeah. He says, for the devourer, I will deal with that. But you must permit me. How do you permit me? When you give me your tithe, you give me the right into your land. Because if I try to rebuke the enemy without the right, he will ask me, you are rebuking me as who? Listen, Satan took Jesus in a fraction of a moment and showed him the kingdoms of the world and the wealth they are in. And he said, listen, you see the wealth of the world? They were given to me. I have the right to give to whoever because it was given to me by the one who had authority. If you can bow before me, I will give them to you. You know what Satan said? Man has no authority to rebuke me out of possession. I have answered somebody's question. Why non-believers, devil worshippers prosper easily? God cannot defend your land without your permission. Any money that is not tithe, the enemy has a field day. You will pay stupid bills. You will invest in things you can't account for. If some of you were to see how much you've invested and lose, you would be among those who own Kenya. But you know what? Any money that is not tithe is a field day for the devil. You will invest in a good school and get the worst grades. 
you will have stupid sicknesses that are not explained. You can't account for your money. You know what the Bible says? You will have pockets with holes. You can't explain how your money goes. Now listen, when you calculate what you lose out of disobedience, it's always far much more than the faithfulness of tithing. Let me show you this. It says when you tithe, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Why does God say the contention of ownership? Look at me. This is true to my understanding. Ownership, the ownership of silver and gold is God. The intruder is the devil. You don't own, you are not an intruder, you are a steward. Steward.